Hi, I'm Kelly Holmes. I believe everyone can benefit from sport. And as a national school sports champion, I'm back in schools in their work to ensure all pupils are included in PE and sport. In this programme, you'll see how three very different schools are using good ideas to help achieve this. Are you alright? Yes! Ready to dance? Yes! Gafur Sadikov is a Russian dancer trained in classical ballet. He's a popular and regular visitor to this year five physical education class at Kings Avenue Primary School in Clapham, South London. Gafur is leading the children in a Russian workout, a form of exercise derived from classical ballet. It helps to improve coordination, posture, and build stamina. And jump, bounce, jump, bounce, jump, bounce, very good. Hands on the sides. It's an unusual activity, but in order to provide high quality physical education for all their pupils, the staff at Kings Avenue have welcomed new ideas. Providing appropriate opportunities and challenges to the school's 600-plus children means catering for a wide range. At the school there are nearly 200 children with um, special needs. Um, at the moment there are 15 statemented children in the school. Um, and when a child has a statement of special needs, that means that they have quite significant needs and a high level of support. The school's pupils include some whose education has been interrupted and well over 300 learning English as an additional language. Back to the centre, point, and you change your legs. Now stretch your right forward. The opportunity to offer the children this type of dance activity was unexpected, but welcome. The Manor Ballet Club in Clapham contacted the school and asked us whether we'd be interested in having somebody over to come and show us a couple of lessons. And of course we said yes, it's an exciting idea. So they came in and it was extremely successful. Now jump to your right, jump to your left, arms up. Gafur offers his classes on a voluntary basis and they've been running weekly for over two terms. The benefits are multifaceted. Some of the more energetic dance moves are deliberately introduced to appeal to boys. They help to engage them in what's often seen as a girls' activity. General routine, which includes some physical exercise, so boys involved as well. And then, if you saw a uh, street jazz dance routine, it's got like kicking stuff, a bit of hot movement, so they like it, and you can see it from the eyes, like, the excitement. I mean, the joy they give it is just beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Pupils with limited English are easily able to copy the sequences so that a potential barrier to learning is removed. Gaffor is also consciously incorporating moves that are helpful for Leonie, a wheelchair user. Definitely I have to bring something so she can join the class as well. So we do a lot of movements with the shoulders, with the hands and head so she can also move and uh, she doesn't have a lot of movements because she's always sitting and when she does it, it's going to keep uh, her health. And... Leonie enjoys the movement and stretching. I, what I like most about me is about exercise and, and stretching and, and doing all part of my body. Leonie can't participate in everything that the dance class does, but when she can't join in, differentiated activities are provided. It's an example of the way PE coordinator Lorna Mooney and assistant head Lucy Roberts plan in order to ensure inclusion. We went through each and every child's special needs and what they needed, what their self-esteem is like, the extent of their dis disability like Leonie, and then according to that, we drew up a plan on how to include everybody. As a full-time PE coordinator, Lorna is present throughout Gaffel's dance classes, free to assist and evaluate pupils' progress. If she feels a pupil has a particular talent, the school has links with the Royal Ballet that enable the child to develop further. Let's see who's going to go and show us how to start them. Uh, Tyler? 
Elsewhere in the school, approaches to PE teaching are equally inclusive. These year one pupils are working on their throwing skills. Their classmate Kofi is autistic and the staff feel it's important for him to learn alongside his peers. With a flexible approach to providing for special needs children, this is possible. We do have the plan on paper, but sometimes we need to change it on the day, all depending on the specific you know, the specific child coming in and what the mood is like and whether they're in a good mood or bad mood. Sometimes they come in from the playground and they had a little mishap in the playground and you change your planning quickly to adapt their special, their feelings. It's accepted that Kofi will find concentrating on this task more difficult, but sensitive attention from a teaching assistant provides him with suitable learning challenges and enables him to succeed. Kings Avenue also has 10 designated places for visually impaired children. When it comes to PE, simple changes like the use of names and a ball that makes a noise enable visually impaired pupils like Shante to participate. Shante. The changes needed to make PE appropriate to pupils' diverse learning needs aren't usually expensive or problematic. At Kings Avenue, they've discovered that many of the answers come from a combination of teamwork and original thinking. It's teaching assistants, working together, communicating with teachers, getting parents involved, parents and carers involved, because they have a vital role to play in their children's education. Um, and the school has a lot of support that uh, we buy in from educational psychologists, physiotherapists, speech therapists, and outreach teachers who come in and, and support those children. But it's about a partnership, about working together. I think some schools struggle um, linked to finances, but um, you know every school is going to say that they want more money. I think it's about being creative, about working together. 150 miles away in the Somerset countryside lies Stoke St Gregory Church of England Primary School. It has 65 pupils divided into three classes. The nature of a small rural school presents both opportunities and challenges for inclusive PE teaching. Uh, catering for the whole range of needs can be difficult, but equally it can be even easier in a small school because the one thing we, can, we have got is mixed age classes and mixed age classes allows you to differentiate according to ability very easily. So your gifted and talented can be quite easy to uh, cater for as long as they're not the eldest group. We do allow children to fly. Um, they're not constrained by the fact that they're a year five or a year three or a year one. It's much more fluid than that. However, there are times when you are aware of the fact that your pupils don't have a, a big group of children to work with. So, for example, if you have somebody that's particularly gifted and talented, they haven't got lots of other people to bounce off, as we say. The issues are compounded by the school's relative isolation in a rural area and the cost and difficulty of transport. On your mark, go. But thanks to a UK athletic scheme being piloted in the local school sport partnership, a new option is available for broadening opportunities for all. Whoa. Year three and four pupils in all the primary schools in the partnership participate in a series of events such as a shuttle run, speed bounce or ball push. The events take place within each school, but the times and scores recorded by the teacher are uploaded to a special Virtual Athletics League website. There, results can be compared in a number of different ways. Well, the value of the Virtual Athletics competition, it allows for a lot of different formats of competition. So, at the very bottom line, they are competing against themselves. Uh, in, a, in a league table, they compete against others in a league table and the schools compete against other schools. But the structure of the, the competition allows them to actually measure other things like how much they progressed. So we can capture their first attempts, their second attempts, their third attempts. So over a period of time the competition could be how well has somebody mastered the event. Six, 22. Hold well on Mark. Three seconds better that time Mark. So what do the children think of the scheme? I think it's really fun because like, you get more exercise and things. 
Yeah, it's good fun. Um, you get better and better at things that you don't really know. And um, when I first came to it, I thought, oh no, it's going to be really hard. But then I've just got used to it. It's really fun now. Um, I was on the shuttle run, and you, I was, and I kept getting 23 in the scores. And then when I tried again, and um, I tried a new technique to just touch it, not go around the cones, and that got me a better score. I've been doing really well because um, on some of mine um, I've been at the top of the table out of like hundreds of other year threes and um, well boys anyway. Yeah. Halcombe Primary School in Taunton is also participating in the league. 26 to beat, okay. Assistant head Roger Hunt implemented the scheme within the school and has found it provides targets and achievements for all pupils. We have got one statement to child which has a one-to-one -one TA and we make sure that she does some events. And she's done enough events to get an award and certificate at the end. Stop. 44. Equaled your top score. Very good though, Lewis, very good indeed. The Virtual Athletics League also has cross-curricular applications. There are wonderful opportunities for data handling. The children go online, they can compare their, their results with schools up and down the country. Roger has included a fair amount of literacy as well, um, a lot of instructions, and uh, they've got digital photographs of the children and bullet points and all the things that you might want to include from, uh, from literacy and numeracy as well. Individual children's identities are protected, but as more and more data are entered, the value of the scheme increases. The beauty of the Virtual Athletics League is that it can identify gifted and talented children from whatever year who have been competing. Um, the website is set up so that the individuals can be identified and those individuals can be uh, invited to multi-skill academies and multi-skill clubs that we run. So potentially they can be then guided and steered into the correct um, uh, sport specific um, academy when they're older. Let's have a look and see how the year three boys are getting on. Yes! Wow! By 10 points. Yes. For the pupils at Stoke St Gregory, the Virtual Athletics League isn't just about competition. It makes them part of a wider world, I think. Um, being in a small village school and living in a small village community can be a bit insular, but it's taking them beyond the boundaries of the school. Three schools working to ensure that national curriculum expectations are fulfilled so that all pupils are included in physical education. They have found ways to set appropriate challenges, cater for diverse learning needs, and overcome barriers to learning. Above all, being inclusive in PE stems from a school's ethos. By being an inclusive school, we can overcome any obstacles in terms of thinking about what children can do rather than saying, you know, this child can't do this or can't do that. It's, it's being positive and looking for um, creative ways of how children can participate and be included in, in a PE session. Yeah.